Okay, so in this video, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, first welfare theorem and second welfare theorem and the importance of convexity. Uh, and this is a theorem that in my years of teaching, I've realized that students have a hard time kind of uh, understanding. So let's start with the first welfare theorem. So what does the first welfare theorem says? Well, it really says that any equilibrium allocation a Walrasian or a competitive equilibrium allocation. If you don't know that definition of an equilibrium allocation, just look that up. But I'm assuming that you know what an equilibrium allocation means. So any equilibrium allocation is baryodiffusion. And probably the standard way to think about this is you think about the Edgeworth box where you have an individual, let's say individual A here, you have some particular good X1, some particular good x2 and you think of an individual b here right and a particular point here so for example this one could be an endowment point so let's say endowment one right of a particular a particular division of the resources right and then what, what happens is that we let these individuals trade with one another from a particular endowment and they will end up in a particular situation right? they could they could start trading with each other um and in this line here could be what's known as the contract curve. Curve. So this could be the, you know, the, the collection of all Pareto efficient allocations. So what are Pareto efficient allocations? Are, are allocations where we can't make someone better off without making at least someone else worse off. So the first welfare theorem says that any equilibrium allocation is a Pareto efficient. So for example, if you started from this endowment, this endowment could not be a, uh, an equilibrium. It cannot be a, an equilibrium because it's not Pareto efficient. So these individuals might trade, for example, and might end up here, okay? So this could be um, the equilibrium for that first endowment one. So from this endowment one, we went to this equilibrium. Okay. So first welfare theorem, any equilibrium allocation is a Pareto efficient allocation. Now, what is the only requirement or the main key requirement of this uh, of this wealth, welfare theorem is that the preferences are strictly monotonic, right? So we have monotonic preferences or local non satiations that where, where more is better. Right? Now, in particular, this theorem does not tell you that you know just because this allocation here, I could call this you know allocation one, just because this allocation is Pareto efficient, it does not mean that it will necessarily be an equilibrium allocation. Okay. Um, but the implication of the first welfare theorem is that even if there is no government intervention under no externalities, competitive equilibria, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the only thing that you need in order to achieve this um, Pareto efficiency is to let the individual stray. Okay. Now, the second welfare theorem says that you need monotonicity plus convexity. And of course, no externalities, no frictions in transaction, et cetera, et cetera, price taking behavior, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what does the second welfare theorem say? Well, the second welfare theorem says that any Pareto efficient allocation can be made, and we'll talk about briefly about this idea of making it, right? any Pareto efficient allocation can be made an equilibrium. What, what that really means is that now we're actually doing some conditions that says that every single point that is Pareto efficient could also be supported in an equilibrium. Related but different. Related by different. Um, so what does it really mean? What does it really mean graphically? Well, well graphically, it simply means that, for example, um, if we started off from this endowment here, endowment one, and let's say that society, for whatever reason, you had a social welfare, and you said, sure, all of these points are Pareto efficient, but society would prefer this. Let's say that this is the society outcome that we want, okay? It's, it's Pareto efficient, 
Um, but it's we can't achieve that 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 outcome with these current endowments. Then the social welfare, then the then the second welfare theorem says that by appropriate transfers. Right? So, for example, I could move society to here, right? I can do some transfer and move it to this endowment too, and then let this individual trade. I will still be able to get that um, that that you know, socially optimal allocation. Right? So second welfare says any parity efficient allocation can be made in equilibrium allocation. Okay. So the moment you found a parity efficient allocation, you could switch this around and you, 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 you'll get to that. Now, what's another kind of illustration that I would like to give you here? Um, another important illustration here, I would like you to, that, that I'd like you to see is that, um, well, give a counterexample, right? So I want you to see a counterexample in this in this particular situation here, and the way we can we, the way we can see a, a counterexample is by actually drawing it. So imagine that we're back to an address box that you should be familiar with. If if not, you can kind of look at some alternative information on this. And imagine that you have a convex set of preferences. Okay, this is a convex set of preferences. Let's say this is for individual two, okay? Looks, looks, looks convex, but probably can do a slightly better job at making it look a little bit better. Here we go. This looks a bit better. This looks more, more, more convex. This is for individual two. With a different color, let's say I'll give some non-convex preferences. Um, let's say non-convex preferences. Okay, so this is an indifference curve. This is an indifference curve for uh, individual one. Okay, and I claim that this point here is parity efficient. That point there is parity efficient. How, how can I convince myself that it's parity efficient? Well, um, any point here would be better for the red guy. Any point here would be better for the blue guy. And actually, x there is no parity improvement on from the x. Okay, so if I go to this side, I make the the red guy. If I go to this side, I make the red guy better off, but the green guy, the blue guy, worse off. Right? If I go to this side, well, I make one of them better off, the other one, the other one uh, worse off. Actually, I make both of them worse off. So here, I make both of them uh, worse off. Right? Here, I make both of them worse off. And the the, the problem is here is that if you kind of come up with a, a particular pricing here that looks like this, for example. Um, and, and I could, could do a slightly better job at, 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 at doing this. Um, and in particular, I could make this part here be a little bit further down like this. Okay, So let me just kind of remove this a little bit so that I can make my point a little bit clearer. Let's say if I remove this, yeah. So imagine that that green line is the equilibrium price that I need, right, in order to, you know, for this allocation, right? So sort of like the equilibrium for the market clearing price. Well, one can see that X is not optimal for the red guy because there is this all this area here, right? They would be on a slightly higher, they would be on a slightly higher um, indifference curve. So even though X is Pareto efficient, so it could be coming out of the contract curve, right? So here you could have a contract curve, right? Um, contract curve, so the set of Pareto efficient allocation, that X cannot be sustained in an equilibrium. In other words, there does not exist prices such that both players, both agents in this case, are maximizing their utilities by choosing that, that allocation X, okay? Um, because the blue player is, okay? But the, the red player would be better off kind of being somewhere here. So hopefully that, that kind of helps clear up some, some, some aspects of this. So first welfare theorem says that if you got into an equilibrium, that equilibrium must be Pareto efficient. It does not say that every Pareto efficient allocation could also be supported in an equilibrium. And in and, and the second welfare theorem, which requires this additional convexity assumption, it's telling us that if you pick any point on the contract curve, anyone you like, for as long as it's Pareto efficient, 
I can make transfers of endowments, for example, through lump sum taxation, um, to to justify to to reach to that to reach to that um, uh, that that allocation. In other words, the only thing that you need to reach that allocation from a government intervention perspective is this transfers of of allocation. I hope this helps. This helps. See you on the on another video.